What we do need is the following. We need, we need, four, we need four things. We need the actual data. You can't get it, unless you have the actual data, you can't make any decision. You need the actual data, which is usually some number given to you, or you calculate it based on the raw data. You need the fact that the formula from going from an X bar to a mu is this formula here, which we do that repeatedly. And you need to realize that the Z table gives you all the percentages that you need. You can write it this way. If we're going to shoot for an alpha of 5%, I mean, you've got to be told the alpha. So you take that 5% and you chop it in half, which gives you two, 0, 0.25, which is technically 0, 0.250. Zero. And you tell yourself that means this PCA got to contain 2.5% under the ideal conditions of getting an alpha of 5%. It means this other rejection region will, will contain 0, 0.250. Zero. It means the do not reject region will contain the other 95%. And all you got to do at this point is to come up with a boundary that actually chops off 2.5%. And, and that means going to the Z tab, which you got to keep begging you guys to bring to class, or to turn to the back of the book or the front cover of the book, or use your calculators, which has it also built in. And if you do that, and again, I can't be 100 totally patient at this point, it comes out to plus or minus 1.96. And you can verify that by going to the Z tab. Uh, then, so we're not, well, okay, let, let's back up a second. I think I've been doing this a drop, a drop faster than I should. What we're doing now is instead of talking about the boundary in terms of the original X bar, it turns out it's much easier to figure out the boundary in terms of the Z score. Because right, we know we, we want a boundary in terms of Z score. Well, 2.5% is 1.96, and the other 2.5% is positive 196. But, but, but our original data is not in Z scores. This might be, let's say, the size of an elephant, 5,000 pounds. What is, how can you compare 5,000 pounds to plus or minus 1.96? You can't, but just like you go from, back from feet to inches or pounds to uh, kilograms or ounces to pounds, you can go from X bars to Zs by this very simple formula, converting an X bar to a Z, which is based on the fact that we can convert an X to a Z by this formula, but now we're converting X bars, which is the same exact uh, uh, process. You take your data, which is the X bar, that's the key number. You see how far is it from the ideal number, the mu, which is in this case 4.5, divided by the sampling, the, the standard error of the mean, divided by how much variability we expect to find among the averages. And that number, which is a z-score, can then be compared to the boundary and solve the problem. Okay, so so let me just let me so let me let me back up again and do this whole example, so to speak, the shortcut. We were doing the example by the long cut method, namely the following. We have a hypothesis, is a table a good table or a bad table? We like to make a type 1 error at most 5% of the time. We have data of, let's say we picked the example on spitter assignment number 19 or whatever I just said, it was 6.2. So the question is, is 6.2 close enough to 4.5 for us to say I believe the H0? Or is 6.2 far from 4.5 to say I believe the H1? That's again the same problem we've been doing again and again. Well, according to our long calculation, even we tried a pair of numbers, did a whole calculation, came up with an alpha, which was too big. A second calculation, which came the alpha was still too big. A third calculation, maybe a fourth calculation. If all of a sudden done, we have the, the boundary is 2 and 7. The boundary is 2 and 7. That happens to be after lots of, just kind of out of magic, that came out of lots of work. And we can take the 6.2 and then see if it's in between. So we know the answer of this particular example is to accept A0. Technically, do not reject the A0. That's the answer by this 45-minute process of work. Now let's do it by the shortcut method. The shortcut method says, take your data and convert it to a z-score. Why we convert it to a z-score? Again, if you're just coming in the middle here, you'd have no idea why. But hopefully now you understand why we're doing that. This data is 6.2, and this number is a made-up number. The ideal number is 4.5. The sigma of x bar by this little side formula, sigma of n, is 1.28. And what does this come out to, please? Somebody do this calculation. 4.6245, I can't do that. Yeah. Got to be a positive number, because it's 6.2 minus 4.5. 1.3. Say again? 1.3. Can you give it to me in two places? 1.33. 1.33. Uh, okay. Anybody disagree with that? Okay, 1.33. And the question is, so again, this is we converted a 6.2 to a 1.3, like going from pounds to ounces, different units of measurement. The 
question, is that except, well, we know the boundary in terms of the z-score we calculated by knowing the knowledge of the z-table is will be plus or minus 1.96. So all you've got to do is to make a little arrow and indicate where is that one point. But 1 1.33 is here. It's certainly in between 0 and positive 1.96. So what do we finally, well, the fact that we ended up into the not reject region means the answer is do not reject a zero. So our answer is simply do not reject a zero, which of course is the exact same answer we came up with by looking at 6.2 and comparing it to the 2.2 to 7. But again, that looks easier, but that two, that 2 and 7 was really hard to get. Now, but this is, takes a little bit. So let's start, let's take the whole example from the top. The problem will say, prove the random number table has an average of 4.5 versus it doesn't have 4.5. Given that you took a sample of five numbers, and the average came out to 6.2, and somebody somewhere got to tell you the sigma is 2.87. Those, those are the three facts, those are like the, the key numbers of the problem. Mm -hmm. so, the first, the sec, so the first step is to write out the hypotheses in a proper way. The second step is to do the calculation to convert it to a z-score. The third step is to come up with the alpha, I should have the other numbers that got to give you the alpha, significance level. Uh, chop it in half in this case, and then you look it up in the z-table, and you come, these are now the magic numbers that you really care about, the plus or minus 196. And the last step is to simply make a physical comparison between the 1.33 and this boundary. And it turns out, by literally making an arrow, you ended up in the inside, which means the accept region. So the answer is do not reject a zero. And I'm going to add one more step on to this process to get full credit for it on the test, which is if I asked you at the original, is the random number table according to this evidence good or bad, you've got to say something. You can't just say I accept a zero. That doesn't really answer the question. The question is, the random number table is OK. Something, something to the effect that we understand the physical interpretation of what we just found. I know. Uh, the M is not 6.25, right? Say again? The M, the sample size? Oh, sorry, I apologize. Right. The N is 5, my, my mistake. N is 5, this, which again is a small sample, but it's good enough for us. That is one more slight simplification I'm going to make here which is, why should you have to calculate on the side sigma over n to get the sigma of x bar? Sigma of x bar is sigma over n. So let's build it into the formula. Let's call this part of the formula sigma over the square root of n. So now you, have the one, you don't have to do a side calculation. You plug in the four relevant numbers into one formula. It's the x bar, the mu, the sigma, and the n all go into one formula. And of course, nothing changes because we still have sigma over n there. So I'm going to pause for a second while anybody would like to ask me a question, because this is it. This, is the, this will be doing this. To, if you understand this, you're going to get the rest of the term relatively easy. And if you don't understand this, you'll find a continual problem throughout the rest of the term. Except we're not going to be going to the, only the Z table in the rest of the term. Sometimes we'll be going to the T table to get Kelvin, Kelvin, Kelvin happy. Sometimes we're going to go to the, he's dying to use the C table. Sometimes we're going to go to something called a chi-square table, a Q table, an F table all kinds of tables, but we're going to be doing the same thing, the same basic process in every single chapter. Uh, question? Yes, you had a question. Can you redo this? I don't understand. Can I what? Can you redo this with different numbers? Yes, we're going to do it. This is like a, a high spinner assignment example. We'll do an example in the book, especially if somebody has the book here, because I don't You want to ask me something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I get this. I have a question going back to the first shortcut you showed us. Showed us. I did it out. I calculated it out, and I didn't get exactly 2 and 7. Am I supposed to just 1.99? Yeah, because like yeah, like I mean, that's really the right, the perfect answer. But if someone put down 2 and 7, that yeah, that's okay. correct. Both, both are right, and yours probably slightly more right. But it's easy to deal with 2 and 7, okay. that's 1.99. OK, so now let's do another example from the top. Uh, except when we do the next example, we're going to make, and we'll do two things. Uh, maybe I shouldn't do this, but I'm always a little pressed with time. Um, I'm going to do another example, but the next example will be even more realistic. Remember, this is the realistic way of doing it as opposed to a theoretical stuff with the alphas and the betas and the boundaries. Now you go straight through the whole thing. It takes about, how long does it take to write this down? About 60 seconds, two minutes? It doesn't take a lot of time. Um,